Good morning, good afternoon, good night. My name is Edward Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero. We are shooting a series called The Pleasure Principle, and this is episode four with the sexologist, Mr. Maurice Mofeka. How are you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm super, man. You're super? I am. Ah, we are going to, episode four is about desire and arousal. And I see you light up when we talk about desire and arousal. <laughs> Understanding desire, arousal, the plateau, orgasm, and resolution. So let's talk about desire. Okay. Yeah. What comes to mind when you hear about desire? Desiring... Well, desire could be I desire to have some cake and custard. And there's also desire that uh, this weekend I desire to be somewhere with a woman with the custard and maybe not the cake. And then she becomes the cake. And then thereafter we get to play. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, desires come in different forms. I desire that uh, we need to do this podcast in South Africa. That's a desire. But I'm sure you're talking more on the sexual bit. Yes. So for me, desire means I'm able to explore or would like to explore my fetishes, which I already know. Um, I used to have fantasies, but I think I've covered most of them. So I just rewind the ones that I feel I want to keep doing because mm. they never get tiring. So desire for me is something I know that works all the time. It's like the fact that I've always loved vanilla ice cream, even though I've tasted so many other flavors, but I always come back to vanilla because there's a way vanilla just drips in my mouth. You feel me? Oh, and melts as vanilla. well. Vanilla. Vanilla. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, what does desire do? Uh, desire... <coughs> Do you know desire is, desire is, when I talk about desire as a married man, uh, it's scandalous. Okay, let's hear the scandalous <laughs> desire. <laughs> you know, this podcast is about being real, right? Yes, it is. It's a being causing problems, right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Less it's, cause it's problems. A, it's about being on the other side of yeah you know whatever let's you know? go let's do this mm. desire for me it's like sometimes i desire that i have many women okay you know mm -hmm. and i can i can eat chapu today then eat uh, fish tomorrow All right and i can only imagine what analogy that is okay uh-huh is it uh, chapo and fish okay uh, but i'm a christian <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you had to throw that one in. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh -huh. So, my desires sometimes are wild. Okay. But I keep them under leash. Okay. You know, because I don't want problems. Right. In other words, I am a coward. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes right. I think cowards live longer. Cowards live longer. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, the thing with cowardness is yes. that you don't get to experience life. True. As it should be. You don't get to explore. Yeah. And I'm an explorer. And exploration can get you into the deep end. Oh, yeah. You can be the, in the deep and thick of things as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that is what desire feels like to me. Okay. There are things that I've always um, thought about. Like, for example, in a bed, tying a woman on, on the bed and slapping her ass. Or, or she tying you. No. <laughs> you don't want to be tied? Her. Or you want to tie up? Yes, and, and slap her ass. Okay. But I don't want my ass to be slapped or to okay. be belted. Right. So what can she do for you? Yeah. Because what you're describing is a bit of BDSM. So what can she do for you? You've tied her up. Yes. Uh, can you reverse the role? Can she do something for you? Can she at least cuff you? Yes. She can cuff you. She can cuff me. Right, okay. My legs. She can cuff your legs? Yes. Okay. okay. You know? Okay. And ask her for something, and then she tells me, no yet. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So there's some role play yeah. where you're, you're, you're the submissive one now, and yeah. she takes charge. Yeah. Okay. You see, you're lighting up as well. Clearly, you like your legs or your feet bound. Okay, okay. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. I, think, I think because... Can she put nipple clamps on you? Nipple clamps. Yes. On my nipples. Well, th that's hence why they're called nipple clamps. I don't see them ending but up on your face. But do men have nipples? 
Yes, they do. But wh- I don't know because for for me, I I'm like, what am I gonna feel if nipple clamps are put on me? Well, until it's clamped, you won't know. Hence the exploring. Anyone who's ever liked something had it done to them first, then you know. So I'm just suggesting. But that now you try I am. Nip- but but now I'm asking you. Yes. What what feeling? Some sweet pain. Sweet pain. Not bad pain, but sweet pain. Mm. You might even like it. Ah. Yes. Okay. That is, that's I'm sure you don't want her to clamp your balls. They can clamp your balls? Well, I don't know about they, but balls have been clamped. Yes, and what is the, what is the, what is, what is the feeling? Clampy. <laughs> no, 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 you talked about, no, it, it, you it, talked about, it, it's all you towards about sweet clump- pain. For some men, it can be disastrous. For some men, it's like, oh, I love that. Is there a subtle pain that you enjoy? Like, you know, like the way a, a man might bite a woman's neck and give her a hickey? Like, is there like a, a, a mini bite that would turn you on from a woman? Yeah, I think I think biting my neck turns me on. There you go. So, you know, the, you, the two of you can try many things. Maybe she can clamp your neck or something. You've got to try it to know how it feels. Mm. Yes, right now we're just imagining. Explore. Explore. And how does this whole conversation start? With who? With, 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 your, with the person that you want to do this with. Um, well, it starts with, it doesn't have to be personal. It starts like, um, have you ever tried this? Have you ever tried this? Or I watched a film and some guy's nipples were clamped and I've always thought, how would that feel? Now you, you are feeding them the information. So now they can be like, hold on. Now we're discussing this. Why don't we try it? You've got to ask to know what the answer is. And considering she's open enough to talk about it, she's even suggesting things, she's even probably laying out the fact that she's also watched a bit of BDSM, that gives the energy of there could be more of a yes than a no. But unless you go down that road, you'll never know. And somebody might be like, hmm, how do you... First, do you have the tools? Do you have the kit? Do you have the cuffs? Do you, if you're going to like uh, tie up, do you have the rope and stuff like that? And have you ever tied anyone up? Do you even know how to make the knots? Those are things that you discuss and you can watch videos that teach you how to do it. And then the day you decide to do it, you just explore. It doesn't have to be 100%. You get to be 100% or near 100% the more you do it. But the fun is... If you got the knot wrong, then even trying to undo it, you start laughing. You see, you already want to smile. So the point is just to go with the flow, laugh, have a laugh. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. Just have fun. Mm. Yes, and if all fails, just make sure there's a knife somewhere so you can cut it off. Otherwise, one of you will be moving around with some rope attached to you. That might look a bit odd. Mm. (laughs) So you you have... You need to have a kit. Yes, I mean, they're, they're play kits that you buy. They have different, they're play kits that have 24 pieces, 36 pieces, 50 pieces. It just depends. But the point is, you can start, you can start with just even your tie, blindfolding each other or tying each other with just your normal office tie. Getting rope, you can buy ropes so many places. Just avoid tying uh, the way you guys would tie goats in the village. Because I think people have died doing these things. Uh, if somebody clamps your balls wrong, if somebody okay, clamps... Okay, I've never heard of uh, clamped balls causing death. People have normally died when they do risky stuff. BDSM is not usually risky. Risky stuff is where you put your tie on and you're told to maybe apply to some door and then the door swings so that your neck is dragged. That might kill you. But most of BDSM, especially the more liked one with the, with the kit, it's just about cuffing and gag, maybe a ball gag or some nipple clamps. That's, that's, the most it's going to do is this slight pain, which is sweet, but it's not going to kill you. Mm. Yeah. So. And then, and then, of course, the reaction is that when you find that something is painful and you're feeling uncomfortable, then you need to talk about it. 
no, what happens is you have you have like guidelines, you know, you have like uh, like safe words. So if the pain is becoming too much, you say the safe word and the, the whatever it is that she was doing, she stops doing. There's always a safe word. It's like the women who love asphyxiation, which means they love a degree of being choked. She'll tell you how far you can go. And if she mentions the safe word, you stop. What are the safe words? Do you know any no, of the safe you, words? No, 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 no. They're not specific one. Safe word could be anything. It's the two of you to decide. The safe word could be anything that you come up with. You can, you can come up with ridiculous ones just for the laugh. You see? Yeah, so there's not like the specific ones. The two of you will make up a safe word. Mm. So we, get to, we want to get into the bedroom. Yes. Sex and arousal, right? Um, take me through how... Let's, 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 let's differentiate them for the sake of clarity. Sex and arousal. Yes, no, no, no. No, no, no. We we want to go into the bedroom. We okay. want we want to make that I want to make that woman ready for sex. I want to make that man ready for sex. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. So we want to start with the man yes. making that that woman ready for sex. Right. Let's have a scenario. Okay. We are supposed to ha to start having our 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 hot time, you know? Okay. At around let's say 6. 6 p.m. Yes. Okay. I want let's you start start talking to this woman at around you know late afternoon. Okay. Yeah. So you want to know how we break down that? Yes. Well, start with flirting. Mm -hmm. And flirting is just an exchange of words, gestures that trigger a certain emotion. It's like, for example, uh, you're just chilling, maybe having a drink, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the context has to be right. I'm assuming you and I are already at that point where you're free with one. Yes, of yes, yeah? yes. So she's not too new to you. No, 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 no. no. Uh, then it's as simple as we could just be chilling, having a drink that afternoon, and I may just look into her eyes and ask her, "So, are you wearing anything under that?" Mm. It's even the way you you looked at me. You know exactly what I'm asking. Yeah. And then if she's playing along, she might say something like, who's asking? Ah. And, and if I was or wasn't, what would they do? Ah. So now she's telling me, we can play. I see the game you've started. We can play. And the more we flirt, the more we can lead into what you were saying. 6 p.m., 7 p.m., there's no time to it. But things could lead you know, to the bedroom or to the sofa or to the veranda, wherever it happens, the kitchen, it doesn't matter where it happens, but that now becomes the seductive nature and energy that we're growing. So everything we're doing, we're just flirting. Yeah, like if we're having, if we're having a meal together, uh, I'll be like, um, you know, can you, can, you, can you slide me? And the fact that I've said slide me, and then I pause, and she's and already because the context is sexual, she's thinking this cheeky bugger. He's just about to make everything sexual, and I'm like, hold on. I just said, can you slide me the salt? And then when I'm putting on the salt, I'll be like, uh, just have a look at what I'm doing. I'm tenderizing the steak. You see, I'm making it sexual, but I'm using the salt. That's how you start flirting. And what does this, this do to the woman's body? We are still on the woman. What does this do to the woman's body? Well, because, um, because the reason it, why it, I'm it, asking... It would, it, would be, it would be ridiculous to say it works a certain way for all women. Mm. But the one thing is, if she's playing along, it means she's getting aroused. Like, for example, if a woman is there looking at you and going like, um, I hope you're not wearing any boxes, then that sends you to your particular area and you could find yourself getting a bit of a twitch a bit of a throb why because she's turning you on so if it comes to woman it could be something like right now she's feeling that uh, you know her panty liner is a bit wet or her nipples are suddenly hard or she's having to swallow saliva a lot it just depends on how she reacts to what you're seeing at the time you see like if a woman's talking about uh, your man or the area, then your brain will concentrate on that area. If the woman's telling you, I wouldn't mind kissing those lips, you start thinking about your lips. So the arousal comes from what the context is of the flirting at that particular time.
But all I can say is her body is being aroused the same way a, a man's body would be aroused if something is, uh, you know, directed to him. Mm. Beautiful. So I think that, that you've covered even the, the, the man part that I wanted to ask you about. Um, then we go to the, well, the opportunity presents itself. We are uh, in the house. What are some of the things that you can do in the house before you basically go to go to the bedroom, just in the in the, in the house area? But do you have to do do you have to do anything? Like, do you have to go to the bedroom? Well, that's a very important that's a very important thing. You yeah. don't have to go to the bedroom. Mm. You can do whatever you want to do on the sofa set, on the kitchen table, or on the kitchen table. Hopefully, it holds. But yes, you can. On the coffee table. You could do it on a coffee table. Again, you know, it's got to be a strong coffee table. In the garden. You could do it in the garden. Hmm. Hopefully your neighbors are watching as well. You might trigger something in their neighborhood. Who knows? But yeah, just go with it. Don't. It doesn't have to be in the bedroom. In the, the pool area. It, it, yes. Ho- hopefully none of you drown. Yes, but in the pool area. Yes. <laughs> 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 Hope you could swim. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It, 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 just go with the flow. Go with the flow of things. Um, pool area is great because um, then you can both be in the pool naked, assuming there's no one else in the pool. Um, then again, some people are voyeurs, so they don't care if somebody else is in the pool. They just enter the pool. And then you can just hold each other and start bouncing around. And then at some point, you both get aroused. And then, you know, Bob's your uncle. Do whatever comes naturally. That's mm. it. Yeah. Just be flexible. Be flexible. Uh, obviously, um, as you build up, you're probably going to start making out, kissing, stuff like that. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, you probably go down on her. You know, maybe give her her first orgasm there before you introduce your man later on. Just go with the flow. Mm. Go ahead. Keep explaining. Me, I'm not very good at this. So you're the one who you need to take care, uh, charge of this thing and, and, <laughs> and explain it. And, you know, because I also know that there are, there are, there are places that women want to be touched, blah, blah, things like that. No, 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 no. There's, there's, uh, you, it, it, it would be wrong to say there are places women want to be touched. There's a place a woman wants to be touched. So the woman you're with, the best, you see, the thing is people struggle because they think that everything is by default. The best thing is, if regardless of how skilled you are, always ask the woman, where are your arousal zones? Where can I touch you and things really go haywire? And she tells you. It helps you to know what she likes rather than going like, okay, let me copy paste everything I've ever done and let's just hope one of them works. Why not just get the information from the source? So you're ah. talking about conversation, making it conversational. Not not conversation. It's like we're not you're not gonna have like an interview. So which areas of your body can I touch? Oh, your nipple. Okay, nipple. All right. Uh clitoris. Cl- 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 <laughs> uh no knee. No, okay, no knees. Okay, put that there. No more knees. No more I, I usually touch the knees. No wonder I get this wrong. No, it's not that. It's while you're flirting. You probably sat next to each other. You've already kissed or whatever, and you continue kissing. And as you kiss and your mouths slide in and out of each other, you could ask her, like, where can I touch you that you really like? You see, even my tone, you know, don't give her the basic jogero. So where can I touch you? You might scare her entire body. So just lower your tone. I'm sure you can do that. Yeah. And just be more, be more sensual, be more... Uh, be more aggressive, but a subtle aggressiveness, and just ask her, like, where can I touch you? Like, how are your nipples? Uh, she might tell you, don't do my nipples. Nothing works there. But just put your hand here. And she takes you to where, and she, and then you see her reaction, like, yeah. You see how I've reacted? Voila! You didn't have to guess. You didn't have to touch the entire body, hoping for the best. She just directed you to where she likes it best. It won't work for another woman, but it works for her. So it's not really about where do women want to be touched. It's where she wants to be touched. And especially at that particular time. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like the way you just said you love your neck being bit. There might be women who think all that men want is their manhood to be touched. Yet, there's Jagera here. 
if you start like caressing his neck and imply and that you're playing with my beard and playing with your beard uh and then i was going to say um as as you go towards his neck you turn into a bit of a dracula kind of thing it turns him on that's it and you see playing with your beard makes sense because you have a beard now there are guys who have no beard so i don't know what she's going to play with it's the guy to tell her you see how easy it becomes when you just share information rather than think to yourself because i'm a man i should know what i'm doing no 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 None of us know what we're doing until we're told to do it. It's as simple as that. You just harness the skills of wherever you're told to touch, you've now become an expert of it because you've done it long enough. But one skill that you should have is the ability to ask so that you're touching the right areas, you're touching the right rhythm by being able to listen to how she's breathing, her reaction, which is very key. Uh, the one thing women always tell me is some guys are great at fingering and some guys are just disaster as it. And the difference is the guy who knows what he's doing doesn't do this. He let's, let's, subtly let's, 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 let's talk about fingering. Yes. It's a, it's a mood point for men. It's a what? A mood point. Men don't, don't know how to do it. No. They think they do. Can you, they, can you can you they, tell, can you tell they, them? They do it as if it was the, the, the finger starts reacting the way the penis would. Oh, I see. Yeah, all you're doing is jabbing. And this jabbing means that you're thinking your, your, your finger girth is doing something and it's doing nothing. And the fact that you're just inserting your finger and doing that movement, it means you're not even conscious to what that movement, what does it look like? in her vagina track. You're not doing that. You're just thinking, there you go, there you go. Okay, okay, no reaction. Okay, okay, I think this vagina is broken. Yet, yeah, no, it's not the vagina. It's whatever you're doing is not working. But if you just inserted your finger and you started to press towards her G-spot, which is the upper area, like you're massaging rather than going in and out, it's in and then massage that area. The rough part you, is the which one? Sorry? The rough part is which one? Okay, when you say rough, it's it's more rugged and spongy at some point. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's an upper part that of is the, the vagina. G-spot. Sorry? That's the G-spot. It's, 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 it's a membrane that they call the G-spot, yes. Mm. And if you start stimulating that area, depending on the rhythm you use, you're going to be able to know the rhythm is right based on her reaction. So if you do it right and she happens to spread her legs more, then you know you're in the right direction. If you're doing it wrong, she'll cringe and her legs will want to come together because she's thinking, what are you doing? But if you ask, do you like the rhythm? Do you want a bit more pressure? Then she's able to tell you. And if she's able to tell you, it means you're heading in the right direction. Mm. And you're going to give her the stimulus that she likes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So uh, you didn't talk about, about, about some of the things I know that you uh, you're saying that it depends on each and every person. Yes. Even the man, he needs to say where he wants touched. But are there naturally areas that women can 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 play with on men that are basically designed to be those zones that that take that tackle him? Well, for the man, the first zone would be his penis area. And his testicles. It's the one area that most men around the world will respond to. The only difference is what she does with the areas will also uh, establish whether he's going to join or not. And that's where he comes in by telling her, uh, even though you are now holding my member, there's a way I want you to give it stimulus in terms of massaging and stuff like that. So uh, those are the main areas. You'd... Women usually have uniquely more areas that arouse them than they are men. Because, I mean, you said that um, you'd like a woman maybe to bite you in a certain way. But how many men have you heard saying things like they like their ears rubbed or they like, you know, a forehead massage or they like their inner thigh rubbed or they want their toes rubbed? It's rare. There are there men who may specifically like those areas? Yes. 
but there are more women who have those requests than there are men. But you shouldn't look at sex as the key places that I should touch. Ask the person because there definitely is a guy out there who will tell you, even though my penis area is sensitive, it's not my go-to place. Um, I want you to rub my forehead because he's got a fetish for that. And that works for him. For the men, they're thinking, what? You just secluded your your penis for your head? And like, what the hell? But that's his thing. So it's always better to ask the person that you're about to apply stimulus to what they like best. That works best. Mm. We need to move away from five areas of the body that if you touch them, things will be magically working. That's what, we, sexual, that, that's, that's what we read in men's health. Yes, but uh, the people who write... Those who write certain columns in men's health um, and they tell you uh, 15 areas or 20 areas uh, where if you touch a man, he'll be aroused. Uh, they're trying to sell their content. They're trying to sell their magazine or their paper. So it doesn't mean what they've lift, listed there actually works. And that's why you find I've never taught my clients ever that there are five things or two things that you need to definitely do and stuff works. That's not how sexuality works. So those are things that people need to unlearn. Uh. You can't put a list of things and they're definitely going to work because I can give a woman a list of what I think uh, Jagero is going to be turned on by. She does all of them and you're not turned on a bit. If anything, you're actually uh, petrified by the fact that she didn't get anything right. So it's better if she just asks you as an individual, what is it you like best? That is the best way to establish a good sexual stimulus. Let's talk about oral sex. Yes. Uh, you're a champion of licking the vagina. Yes, that I am. I ch I'm a champion and I champion it. Mm. It's amazing. A lot of... Do you know, or, or is it true to say that a lot of men don't like a lot of men it's not that they don't like they've never done to be able to like it they have perceptions about it what are the perceptions you see don't like means they've done it they've never done it majority of men have never done it so they have a perception that makes them not like it one it's unnatural two I heard it smells bad. Three, men from my village don't do that. How you, do, how you took that survey, I do not know. Were you just following men around to find out whether they're going to basically lick a vagina? I don't think you did. When you say that you heard it smells, doesn't that also mean that when you insert your penis there, it's smelling? Then you see one of his eyebrows go up because he's realized I'm asking him. So do you normally stick your penis where there's a bad smell? And the answer is no. So it's a perception. And it's been sold by men who just think it's not manly to do it, which means there's nothing manly they're doing anyway, which is just a bit unfortunate. But you see, the thing is, I know that majority of men around the world will never do it. I'm talking to the ones who want to come out of the fold and explore and discover. Have I met men who never liked it before based on their beliefs and based on what they heard through the different perceptions? Yes. And today, do they love it? Yes, they do. But they gave themselves a chance to go like, you know what, what's the worst that can happen? After all, people eat street food. You can't compare eating vagina and street food. Street food can kill you. Vagina won't. Address the smell part. Well, um, the smell part comes from men who had an unfortunate experience um, and also men who have never had the experience but it's been passed on from one generation to another. And that's why you find today the young men I meet who tell me, uh, but we heard the vagina is smelly. But this is in context of licking it. But then I have to ask him, if you've ever inserted your penis in a vagina, withdrew it, and then 
there was a smell, just a bad smell generally. And most of them would be like, no. So how then is there a smell when you're licking it? Because you're close, your nose is closer to it. Okay, that's rubbish though. Mm. If a woman has an infection, which in many times it is, you'll be able to smell it at the distance you and I are at, even further away. Fact. Sometimes she can't smell it, but you can. So that's not the scenario. Most cases, there's nothing wrong with the vagina. It's just a perception. Let's, I have an opinion. Okay. It doesn't smell like candy. Like? Candy. Okay, why do you want a vagina no, 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 to no, smell I'm like candy? No, I'm telling you, it does not smell like candy. Okay. It does not smell like honey. Like? It has got its own natural smell. Right? Yes, which is a very good smell. I've smelled enough to know that it's good. We're not going to debate this. It's good. Relatively. The fact that you compared vagina with candy. Candy is bad. It can give you diabetes. Vagina can't. You're not going to make the vagina sure. lose. You're not. We've been sucking vaginas and it's healthy. You've been sucking candy. You need to go and see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about women okay. giving men a blowjob. Right. And some of the things they don't get right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like just you talk, hold, you talk like just so hold, much. You like talk, just you talk so much as if you're an advocate of women, but yet no, you, but I, you are a man. No, but I'm a protector of the vagina. No, I've always said that, and I always will be. That will never change. Penises need to give me a reason to protect them. You haven't yet. I'm still waiting. Why do you need? Why do you protect the vagina? Why do you protect the vagina? Because it's a beautiful thing. I have a penis and but vagina. <sighs> I protect what I like, dudes. Never protect your penis. How are you helping me, Jagero? How are you and I are going to help each other? You're laughing because yeah. you know exactly what I'm talking That's about. That's a valid question. Yes, we're not going to help each other. So okay. I'm but, going but to talk, protect. Talk, talk about how men, how women can pleasure men. Using okay, let's talk about the things they do wrong. Yes. One is even holding the shaft in itself, they do wrong. And then when they start to like massage it, um, they do it wrong. They start waving it all over the place rather than keep leaving it at one trajectory. Um, but then again, as, as men, we also need to teach them how to do it because we assume they know. The same way we assume we know vaginas. So it's good to teach them how to do it. Um, when she's sucking it, her facial expressions is all wrong. These are things I teach women. Yeah, so as much as you say I protect vaginas, I do teach women about the things they do wrong as well. Guess why? Because they have to deal with other men out there, and I'd like those men to enjoy their sexuality as well. So I do tell them sometimes even your facial expression, you could be do everything right with my shaft, but your facial expression looks like you're under duress. And most of the time it's because she's thinking, what if this guy comes on my face? Yet, if we just had an agreement that I shouldn't do that, and maybe I'd come on your titties or something, then we're good. If you are knowledgeable enough, you'll actually tell her, don't worry, if I do ejaculate at some point, but I won't come on your face. Voila. Do you rest face can go. Women, women, women don't like men coming on, on their face. Some. What you're saying that it's like you're always coming on their face. The quest, the thing is, <laughs> women do. N- they're women who <laughs> think semen, you know, comes from I don't know manufacturers of Ebola. They just have this negative thing about semen. Uh, yet it's just amino acids uh, and zinc and protein and so. There are women who love it. They, they are called the swallows. They swallow. And there are also many. What, what happens if you swallow semen? But I just said semen is a composition of amino acids and protein. So n- nothing. It's protein. It, it can, but it, you, sw- you swallow ugali, which has no nutritional value. Semen's better by far. You can't compare ugali and semen. You can't compare chapati and semen. All the stuff we put in our mouths are worse than semen. Some of them even kill us. 
That's the thing. We have this negative energy towards bodily fluids. And many of them are produced and secreted as natural, healthy juices. Semen, for heaven's sake, it produces life. All of us in this studio are here because somebody ejaculated. Semen created us. So if it goes into your mouth, there's nothing wrong with it because it's just a build of proteins and amino, amino acids. Have you ever tasted your semen? No. Why? For what reason would I taste my own semen? Wow. And the way, the way you've said that, like, for what reason? <laughs> but but, 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 it's, it, it, but it's, it's you producing it. I didn't ask you if you were tasting your neighbor's semen. That would be unusual. But it's yours. Yeah. Have you never been curious to taste it? No. Okay. I've tasted mine so many times. Your semen? Yes. For what reason? To taste it. If I can eat mutura from some guy I don't even know, if I can eat scuba wiki, which was probably grown in some field with feces, why would I not taste my own semen? Taste it. You go like... <laughs> It's actually sweet. It's, it's, it's not tangy. It's not salty. And do you know why it's not salty? Because of the diet that you maintain. Ah. Citric, citric juices. <laughs> celery. Celery. You know celery. You take celery, 70, 80%, 20%, 30% watermelon. You blend them and you take that as a lifestyle. At some point, celery is very good first and foremost for... Uh, increasing your semen volume. So when you ejaculate... Please, please explain this properly. Okay. And I want to post but this I, question. Yes, but I am explaining it properly. Uh-uh, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want you to explain to us yes. how you develop good semen. You said it so quickly and as a by the way. Okay. Good semen. And then after you've done that... Yes. How women can take care of their vagina by, first of all, washing it, and then secondly, what they can eat to have a healthier vagina, something that will, that will be tastier to men. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's start with uh, male semen production and health. Um, and I'm talking from experience. Um, I rarely talk based on something I read because whatever I read was a very long time ago, even though I still read, but now it's based on many experiences and uh, experiments that were done a very long time ago. So you get to know what works and what doesn't. Um, there are supplements that can help with uh, semen production, but a very easy way and uh, inexpensive way is, but this has to be a lifestyle. The way you take coffee or you take tea almost every day, it has to be a lifestyle. You can replace it with your fruit bowl. If you usually have your meal and then you take a fruit bowl, uh, you can take celery and 70, 80% celery, um, which you can buy in almost every market. Even everyone's shags has celery. Um, take celery um, and you mix it with watermelon. You don't have to mix it, but I mix it with watermelon because celery has a very acquired taste. It's a bit tangy. Tastes good, but it's a bit tangy. For some people, it might be too much. I can take it with or without the watermelon, but I've, I've realized it tastes better with watermelon because uh, watermelon's a, a bit sweet. So 20% watermelon, 80% celery. Put in a blender, blend it, make a smoothie, and just drink. Just drink. If you do that... If you can't do it every day, do it at least three times a week. Celery is very good for semen health and also for producing good semen. We produce anywhere between 700 to 1500 sperms every second of our lives. And they expire so that you can have a new production of sperm. They just don't settle like they're settling in the fridge. They are produced, they die more produced. Um, if you do that long enough and if you can take... If you can take a lot of foods that have a lot of zinc or you take zinc supplements, like I take zinc supplements. Uh, I've been taking supplements that are good for my body since 1995. So it's been a long time. Continuously. Like I said, it's a lifestyle thing. If you want your body, your body is a machine. 
Your body is a car. It's an engine. If you don't service your engine, if you don't give your engine the right fluids, if it's petrol, if it's oil, if it's if you don't take it for service, it won't function well. True or false? Our bodies are the same. Unfortunately, we've been told that our normal home foods, our carbohydrates and our proteins, and our balanced diet nonsense with a few greens here and a bowl of fruit, that that is healthy and that will make your 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 body function it won't especially if you want a prime functional sexual body the things that you have to do and some of them is you have to take something that is more of a supplement so the smoothies and the zinc supplements are going to do wonders there are other supplements that the real masimbas the guys who want you know the guys who also want to maintain their penis girth uh, there's also the usage of penis pumps to make sure that your penis never has shrinkage. It just depends on, there's a guy who said like, I don't need all that because sex for me is not a biggie. I can go without. Then there's another guy for him, sex is like uh, the addiction that men have with football. Or like I who, I love watching Formula One. So my Lewis Hamilton moment is I have to make sure that my penis health is always there. Like that guy who likes going to the gym and stuff like that. Um, He's gymming his penis. Sorry? He's gymming his penis. There you go. When it comes to women, uh, (laughs) there's always this crazy debate. And the debate is a lot of gynecologists will tell a woman that she doesn't need to do anything extra other than just clean her vagina with just normal water. Uh, But what I found is this. The water in Nairobi, the water in Ukambani, the water in Central, the water in Mount Kenya, the water in Mombasa, they're different water systems. Uh, The nutrients in Mount Kenya water, which are very natural, the minerals that are there, versus a town or a county where the water has to be fed to a certain point and it has to be uh, mixed with some chemicals and those chemicals purify the water for us to be able to drink it. But no one asks, what's that chemical doing to the vagina? Does it change the pH? So if we did do a lot of research, you'd find that certain women from certain regions have less vaginal issues for them to be able to see the gyna compared to others. And sometimes it's as simple as that water that's supposed to be very good or the vagina is self-cleansing. Most things change because of lifestyle. Things you eat, uh, your vagina surrounding, whether you wear very tight panties or are you always the panty liner. If anything, to be honest... Women should not wear panties unless they're on their period. It's the way men move. Explain explain that a little bit. That is going to be scandalous. It's not scandalous. Uh, It's scandalous because of where your brain has taken it, but it's not scandalous. It's just a woman without a panty. Why should we... Funny enough, African women lived pantyless for thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years before they ever discovered the panty, which they only discovered the other day. Fact. So when you say scandalous, what's more scandalous is that we've forgotten how to be African. Now we are moving with the Western world. We're wearing underwears. Look at what men did. We used to wear underwears. Now we wear boxers. Why did we start wearing boxers? Because we were told underwears will shrink our penises. So we started wearing boxers to, for, so that our balls and our member can let loose. You know, they're, like, they're just hanging around like Tarzan. You know, without the trees, obviously. So when it comes to women, you don't need a panty. And guess what? There's so many women today who move around pantyless and they have less infections. Fact. Talk to us about how move going pantyless. What do they say? It's going what? There is a phrase they use, going... I've forgotten that, that, that phraseology. Uh, but why does it, what does it minimize infections if you go pantyless? Okay, let me, give you, let me give you an example that you'll understand. Have you ever worn a tight underwear? I have. And then when you removed it, 
especially depending on the temperatures you're at. You walk, let's say, let's say like right now, Nairobi, it's becoming a bit hot. You've walked around and everything. Later in the evening when you remove your underwear, as you remove it, you, you, you get like a smell. There's a whiff. Yes. A whiff. And if you take it and you smell it, you go like, oh God, what the hell is that? <laughs> That's the sweat that has built up over your movement, which is natural. Now, don't wear the box or the underwear. Move about. You remove your trousers or whatever was basically covering your member, there'll be less of a smell or none at all. The buildup was from the fact that that sweat at some point starts to build up bacteria that starts to smell. So now take that to the panty that's squeezing the vagina, areas where her vagina will come and start having sweat on the skin from the glands, that builds up over time and it starts to smell. It's not a vagina thing, it's just even your armpits. That's why there are people who perspire more than others. But now let loose. Let me not wear a very tight t-shirt and I'm letting loose and I'm walking around. There'll be less sweat, true or false. Because there's not that compression that's causing more heat and building up that bacteria. So it's as simple as that. So if she does that, she'll limit her infection. The other thing is this. I've advised a lot of my clients to take a syringe, you know, just a normal syringe that's like a 50 uh, milligram um, uh, syringe, and then take, this is a yogurt, open the yogurt, take the syringe, pull it like you do medicine, and then she spreads her legs, and then she sprays the yogurt in her vagina. She can spray as much as she wants. She can even spray, you know, 80 milliliters. Most of it will be pushed out. The same way when you ejaculate, some of the semen starts to drip out. Now, the, the, the yogurt that's left in a vagina, and by the way, the yogurt has to be natural, no flavored yogurt. So it's not banana flavor, it's not strawberry, just natural yogurt. What's going to remain in her vagina is going to start manifesting positive bacteria. Bacteria is good and it's bad. This positive bacteria. That positive bacteria will actually align her pH. I know this because, one, I've had many clients get back to me and said, wow, it worked. Yet there are many things she did before that that didn't work. So just yogurt itself can help you. But unless you try it, you won't know. Are there women who will decline doing that? They are. But you can only share the information. What somebody does with information is really up to them, to be honest. How about something that they'll eat? Um, to be honest, that yogurt I'm talking about, they're told to eat it. But you see, the vagina, it's like a... It's like a tube. In that tube, there's tissue, there's membranes and nerve endings. There are little, little pores. If you were to magnify it, there's very minute pores. All those pores need to be treated directly. If you're eating something, the odds of it helping the vagina are very slim in the way it should help. So it's better to insert. That's why sometimes if... Um, Sometimes they're given pessaries to insert. Why are they inserting? Because it would work better than consuming a tablet. So if you insert the yogurt and then just push it out, do not wash it out. So push and all the yogurt that needs to drain out of your vagina will, but the one that remains will start to cleanse. And if you do that like at least once a month, you'll find that your pH is fine. There are those who will do it, there are those who... Well, not, but those who have done it have always, and I'm talking about the last two decades, I've advised that. And they've always gotten back to me and told me, wow, it's working. Brilliant. So uh, what other things can you say, now wrapping up, what other right. things can you say about arousal and about, about, about sexual health? Arousal and sexual health. Um, if you want to enjoy your arousal ability... One, be open-minded. Don't be restrictive in overthinking because uh, then you're not going to be able to enjoy 
uh, the degree of arousal that you can actually uh, gain as a human being. Um, learn to ask somebody what they best like so that you can give them the best arousal. Uh, the language and the flirting language and just ask as many questions. Uh, maintain a tone that's sexy. That also helps. Uh, it's part of the package. Um, and when it comes to sexual health, all I can say is don't not, don't have too many, don't go all OCD on cleanliness, but just try to do your best just to be clean. Um, there are men who do not like a woman who goes to shower before sex. I'm one of them. Actually, if you shower, you can put me off. So don't go overboard with the showering all the time. Sometimes your your little sweat and your natural your natural scent is a massive turn on for so many men out there. What I've always found strange is they can't tell anyone because they think they'll be judged. Isn't that sad? So just be you and go with the flow. The more you go with the flow, the more sexy you are. If you have to overplan things, it becomes boring. That's all I can say. Mm, great. Thank you very much, Mr. Mateka. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, my man. So let me Cheers. turn to the audience and tell them that uh, this was, you know, pleasure uh, in the arousal, episode four. Episode four? Yeah. <laughs> You're going fast. I know, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mateka. So Mateka is a sexologist, a sex therapist, and a relationship coach. Correct. We are going to be leaving his numbers down, and you can always talk Get to him touch. directly yes. via WhatsApp. Yes. He says that if you want to reach him, please state your name, you know, say hi, and then explain what, how he would like, you'd like Matheka to come into your life and help you. Correct. Then I will respond. Don't just say hi, 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 hi. Exactly. It's tiring. Very tiring. Yeah, I can see it <laughs> in your face. The other thing is that Dialogues with Jagero is going to be a bold conversation. It is a radio bold conversation. And one of the things that make something like this platform huge is that if you can be able to give your feedback, you can comment, you can disagree with Matheka on the comments, you can agree with him, you can give your testimony about what happened to you. We've talked about health. You can always add on to what he has said and help uh, our listeners and our viewers. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit on that notification bell. But we also are on other socials. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. I hope by the time you're seeing this, our TikTok account has been restored. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have our Facebook we have a Twitter, you know, now X. We have uh, Instagram and we have Facebook. Please like us, follow us, and until another episode, bye for now.